Hello, YouTube friends. So in a video or two ago, I told you guys I was going on a year long buying freeze. Well, I just have to tell you that life has a way of working out sometimes and I have such an exciting thing to show you today. Let's get started. So here's the story guys. We were not able to do Christmas with my husband's brother's family because of the pandemic. They just weren't comfortable having everyone over and that is just fine. So we thought we'd wait it out and see, but turns out we could never get together. So we sent our gifts to them and they sent their gifts to us and look what they got me. Ha! <laughs> I am above and beyond excited for this. Every time I look at it, I just get a rush of good feeling and I'm very excited. So some of you said in my wish list video, which I'll link up here for you, to get the Schminka set instead of the Sennelier. And I did put that on my wish list. However, I didn't take this one off because I wanted this one as well. And so they chose this one, which is really generous. They usually spend $25 US dollars on me for Christmas and then $25 for my birthday, which is on Christmas day. <laughs> so a total of $50 and this, I think at the time she bought it was around 87. So very generous, I'm very grateful, quite surprised <laughs> and over and beyond excited. Let's open it, let's see what it looks like. Oh, nice big tin, very heavy. These are 10 milliliter tubes. Okay, so this is what the palette looks like. Let's put it sideways for a second. Okay, I'll probably take this bottom flap off. I don't usually need that much mixing space anyway and it just gets in the way. I've done that in my other videos. There we go. I don't get rid of these, I do keep them. So I just put this in my kind of bulk watercolor drawer and if I need it ever, I have it. And here they are. <laughs> I temporarily got distracted with that whole lid thing, but here they are. Oh my gosh, so pretty. I'm going to pull just like these two out so you can see the way this is in this tin, maybe three. They have these kind of different bars in there for holding the actual tubes. Now I am going to go ahead and squeeze some into full pans and use them. They're honey based so you know traveling with them they might need to stay flat so I've heard. I haven't really experienced that yet but we will see. All right, little size three brush. It's kind of neat that it has that place for a brush. So I may replace that with one with a cap. So to get started on this party, <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and fill all the full pans so those can get a start on drying. And then we can swatch, make a swatch sheet, put our palette together, paint to painting. I won't make you sit through all of that, so don't worry. So it's probably a good thing I bought a hundred of these the last time I placed my order for them because I'm certainly uh, using them up here lately. So this is the lemon yellow. Let's at least open one with you and see what it's like. We will grab something with grip to help us. <laughs> there we go. All right, it's very liquidy. And I'm not gonna bother with the layering method. <laughs> I just don't care enough. Oop, I filled that more than I wanted to. I was distracted by the binder. So that one is very liquidy. I wonder if another one will be. Let's try a completely different color for a minute and see. Let's try this French Vermilion. See what we got in there. So these paints are probably liquidy like this a little bit to start with because of the honey binder, but like I said, guys, I'm no expert, so don't listen to me on this stuff. I just like paint. I know what is and is not artist quality based on things that I have researched, and that's about it. I spent some time off camera setting up this palette, so I pried this out. It's kind of almost riveted in, I'm not really sure. They press it and it goes through the tin, and I was able to pry it out. I'm going to keep this and put on my shelf or markers. I do have some markers that don't have a home right now because my marker bin is full and I'm on a no buy year, remember? So we'll make do with this and I think that will be really nice. Perfect, it'll hold 12. <laughs> Couldn't ask for anything better, right? So you get creative when you can't buy things. Back to the palette. If you look at it at an angle, you can see that you'll be able to see the color names with the exception of the yellows. The yellows names are that way just because of the way that I put them against the edge here. This one sticks into the inside a little bit because of the curve of the palette, so that's no big deal. And just as with my core palette, I used the 3M Velcro strips so that I can move these around. And that'll be really nice in case I happen to get more paints in the Sennelier brand at some point, I can do that. Also, I'll be able to fit another here and an entire new row as well up there. 
So there is room for expansion, and if I don't like this order, I can also move them around. I was actually looking at it sitting on my desk here, and I thought, you know, I might be happier with my yellows up here and the darks down here, so this may end up being completely swapped, and we'll see. I'll probably get used to it. Also, there's room for a brush currently, the way it is currently configured, so another brush in addition to the space over here, which is probably better anyway. Let's swatch. This is the part I'm excited for. <laughs> this is my largest etcher sketchbook. This one is lemon yellow. By the way, I think it's been three days and the paints are still a little squishy. If I push on them, it's still just a skin on the outside. So the only Sennelier paint that I have ever painted with previously is in that little dot card painting that I did with all of the dot cards trying to find an indigo that I liked. And so that's it for Sennelier for me. I really liked the indigo. It was actually one that made the cut, so that's good. This one is Sennelier Yellow Light. Now two of these paints did not have light fast ratings. One said not applicable, and that was the Opera Rose, so we all know Opera Roses aren't light fast anyway, so that's I assume why they said not applicable on that one. So the Sennelier Red says not rated. Oh, I guess they say the exact same thing. They both say not rated, not not applicable, just not rated. Maybe you guys could tell me about the PR254. I'll go look it up after I'm done here too. This one is the Sennelier Red right here. It's very pretty. So I'm also going to take out my B paper and do the light fast test I have in the window of the others. I still have to do that with my Kimi Mia ones and my new Daniel Smith colors, just because it's fun and I like doing that. So it's a pretty color. Feel free to use it, you know, just in your sketchbooks or in your main artwork, you can use it too, in my opinion, because then you just scan it or take the good picture of it and do a print with it. Just don't sell the original. And don't hang it up. <laughs> oh, that one got really messy. Forest green. That is really pretty. This is Thalo Blue coming up next. Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. This is Ultramarine Deep. It's funny, I always think Ultramarine should be so much more pigmented. They never are. I like that though. I mean, I could make it deeper, darker there if I want. Dot that in. Be like, what happened to that swatch? That, that swatches were just weird. Payne's gray. I love Payne's gray colors usually. This is a very, very gray Payne's gray. Probably because their indigo has the blue in it, the blue gray. Burnt Sienna. This one looks weird in the pan. We'll see what it looks like out here. It looks okay. Oh wow, this warm sepia is pretty. It reminds me of the Van Dyke Brown that I can use in other colors, other brands I should say. Now, I don't really feel like coming up with my own idea for a painting today. Do you guys ever do that? You guys just don't feel like getting all brilliantly creative. So I am signed up for Skillshare. I signed up for Hyun's, I don't know how to say her name. I'll pop that up on the screen because the spelling is kind of interesting. Anyway, she did a class, watercolor class through Class 101, which is apparently an online learning platform as well. So I'm going to find one that I like and we will just follow the directions. Here on rachelstudio.com, I was watching her video on this one here, this bunny, which is gorgeous. And she did mention Bodorka, the, the YouTuber that kind of works in this loose style that she has in this rabbit here. And so I checked her channel out. I decided to go with Bodorka, and her name is actually Agnes Bodor, so I'm not really sure how to say her YouTube name, but she's from Hungary. And you can see this is her YouTube channel here, and she has just a few videos, but they're very, very good. She's also on Skillshare under Agnes Bodor, and I figured I should take advantage of that. So I went through most of these classes to see how she's doing her calico cats, and this other one was the black cat here. I watched those mostly all the way through, and we will continue on with a calico in her style because it's really fun. Can't wait. I happen to live with a calico cat, 
So I tried to grab some pictures of her, but it was kind of hard every time I went to approach her. She's like, what are you doing? You are a suspicious human. Stay away. <laughs> she would run away, which is ironic because when I'm sitting down, she'll come sit on my lap and bother me. But anyway, so I grabbed a few pictures of one of my other kitties too because she was a little easier to take pictures of but decided the calico was really what I wanted to go with because that's mainly what Agnes Bodor's Skillshare class is about, our calico cats. So these are the pictures I grabbed and you'll see the one that I choose, that one right there. And it's so funny because I thought I was being so clever by choosing one of my pencils that I got from an art subscription box. They're a color erase pencil and for some reason in my head I had that they were watercolor pencils, even though I totally know they're not watercolor pencils. They're just erasable colored pencils. But I grabbed my yellow color erase and I'm like, yeah, this is going to be great. And then like when I started halfway through the sketch, I'm like, oh, uh, yeah, this is just a colored pencil, but it's yellow. It'll work. <laughs> We're going with it. So I did put water over the entire part of the painting surface, and then I let that dry completely. And then I went back and put water over just the parts of the cat that don't have white. So the parts of her that were white, I just kept blank paper. And then I made the paint as creamy a mix as possible. Now this paint is brand new to me, so I didn't quite get it right. Obviously my colors dry it a little bit lighter, and in her class she goes back over her blacks a lot actually, and she just uses lamp black. I didn't even have a black in this set, so I made my own black, which I think is actually a little more interesting, at least in some cases, so that was okay, but I didn't get my color quite deep enough, and when it dried, like an hour later, I looked at the painting and I'm like, oh, I should have gone over that with even more color that second time, but I also didn't want to overwork my painting because that is a thing. And then this next morning, it's been since yesterday since I finished it and I left it open on my desk to dry and I really actually like it. I like it a lot. So yes, I think I could go in with a little bit more concentrated color in a few places, but overall for my first attempt at this kind of style ever, I really enjoyed that. So I want to try doing this with her again, the same calico cat, and with my other two. The one golden cat is going to be a challenge, but I'm going to try it anyway, but not in this video. Just stay tuned for more fun ideas like that in upcoming videos. And don't worry, I'll bring that cat back in a minute, but I decided I was not even close to done because that painting only used a few colors, and I wanted to use way more of the colors in this set that I just received. So I decided to do another little painting it is just like a walking bridge spanning across a creek with a bunch of foliage in the background. And I had a blast with this one. Thought it was really fun. It was great to try all these other colors out and see what they look like on the paper. And except for missing some stuff up in the corner that I need to kind of expand because my painting looks kind of crooked in the end, I liked it and I think it turned out pretty well. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you had as much fun as I did. These Sennelier paints were so fun to work with. I'm really excited to have them in my arsenal. Definitely going to do that kitty and some more, I don't know, poses? Different mixtures of paint and all of that. Maybe try my other kitties. Make sure you're subscribed down below with the bell on all notifications if you are new. That way you won't miss any of those fun things. So I do have a lot of fun things coming up on this channel. All right, well, I'm sure there's bloopers at the end like usual, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. So here's the story, <laughs> and it's a good one. Well, it's only... I have no idea how to get that out. There we go. Didn't need to turn the camera on yet because I need to figure this out. Oh, have we been blurry this whole time? My brother. My brother always sends me stuff that he thinks I should buy. So good thing I'm on a buying freeze. <laughs> Take that, Jim. <laughs> I just want them to stay. Oh, I have an idea. I'm going to tape these babies. Tape. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs>